Okay. All right, welcome to the Fifth Dimensional Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zarathustra and I'm broadcasting live from Stockholm, Sweden. Um, I'd like to welcome you all. Uh, those of you who are with me for the first time, just uh, uh, keep in mind that we have to mute everyone because devices make funny noises. And uh, so the sound starts to get really weird. But if you have any questions, just either write on the chat box or wave your hand at me and I'll uh, later on after this short meditation, I'll unmute you and then I'll try to answer your question to the best of my ability. Those of you who are on Facebook Live and Instagram, um, I appreciate your presence, but I can't answer your questions. Um, if you want to talk to me directly, you're going to have to sign up through my website um, and then come on our system because it's too much for me to pay attention to three different devices. So um, unfortunately, I'm not able to answer your questions. Um, all right. So for the moment, you know, since uh, the sun starting to shine and it's starting to warm up a little bit here in Scandinavia, I was walking around. This uh, when I got. I mean, when I got back, I went quickly down down the street to get a coffee and come back, and I saw that people are really excited and they're all over. So why don't we do a um, special meditation for the sun, sunshine, welcoming sunshine in our lives. So what we're going to do is uh, we just simply close our eyes and you bring your attention to your heart uh, chakra area. And with those of you who've done it with me, you're familiar with this meditation. But I'm just going to go over it again. So simply come to your heart area and come back to your love come back to this place of the presence and uh, put your judgments about yourself away and just kind of sink into your heart just kind of come into this area and shift your attention from paying attention and being involved with your mind bring your attention down to your heart area and come to simply feeling your own presence just become one with yourself and sink inside your heart and just come to this area take a deep breath and just be present with yourself and disengage from the world your mind your feelings and just hang out in this place but do it in a very effortless way and then i would like to see i would like you to visualize that there is a, a ball of light inside you in your heart area and as you breathe in and out you can see the light is expanding so take a deep breath And just see with every breath you're taking, the light is expanding within yourself. And, and it's warm, it's bright, shiny. You can feel the sun rays. It's the inner sun within yourself. And as you're breathing in and out, the light begin to take over your body. And the light that's coming out of your heart, it, it just matches the parameter of your physical body. And take your time, take a deep breath. And come back to this place of simply loving yourself, accepting yourself, and gratitude. Being grateful that the spring has come, 
and it's very symbolic. The spring is the new beginning, both in the other world and the inner world. And take, take it as a time that you are coming out from hibernation and it's time for growth. It's time for the new you to let go of your past and take a jump and a leap into the higher, higher consciousness. And a part of this leap to higher consciousness is the willingness to let go of your story and simply coming here, returning to the love of self and simply loving yourself with every breath you take. And repeat after me, I love myself. I love myself. I love everybody. I forgive myself. I forgive everybody because I'm love. Because I'm light. Because I'm God. That's why I love myself. And I forgive myself. I say yes to love. Yes to love. Yes. 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 Keep your attention on your heart chakra area. <clears throat> Keep your attention on love and the light that is growing from within. With every breath you take, this light within you, it's expanding and it's taking over your body and now it's taken over your auric field. And now as you have your eyes closed, you just see light. You see the presence, you see love.
Just come back again and keep your focus here on your heart, on the love that you have for yourself, on the presence. The presence. Let your mind judgments go away. Simply stay with yourself. And I know that every breath you take, this is the divine breath. This is the divine presence breathing through your body. And since it's the divine that is breathing through your body, that represents the oneness. The one is within you. And it's surrounding you. And it's your breath and it's your pulse. Therefore, you have no reason not to love yourself. When you have presence in your life, in your every moment life, When Her Majesty, the Supreme Soul, is dancing around you, plays around you, it touches you, it kisses you, Slowly, slowly, you can come back. Bring your attention back here. That's all you have to do, basically. Stop, you stop the madness, and you come back within. You take a few moments, and you bring your attention back within yourself. And you put the story away, like in a garbage bag, you put your story in the garbage bag and you put it away. And you come back to your heart and you remember that you're the embodiment of love. And you remind yourself that you love yourself. You remember that and you repeat that to yourself. I love myself. 
I love myself. I love everybody. Because everybody is an aspect of yourself. Everybody is a different expression of your own self. It's one self appears as, as billions of different beings. So it's very symbolic when you do that. You don't necessarily have to, you don't like the personality or the character of other people or some other people. That's okay. But you recognize their essence is made out of love and made out of the divine self. So when you say, I love myself, you're acknowledging the presence within yourself and you're putting your judgment away and loving yourself. And when you say, I love everybody, you're loving the divine presence in everyone. You recognize that. So for those of you who have a hard time saying, I love everybody, because it may sound fake, we're not talking about the personnel. We're not talking about the characters that you don't like and the role that the other people play in this world, in this incarnation, they're playing a role and you don't like the role and rightfully you shouldn't because you don't resonate with what they're doing, but you're loving the presence, the self. It's one self only appears as many. Please pay attention to this sentence. It's very, very important. It's just not something I'm saying and you let it pass by. It's the one that appears as many. The one that is behind everybody's mask. If you go and tear apart, tear off the mask of every single being on this planet, if you do that, behind the mask of them, you will see the same one. You will see the same face behind the mask. Now, when you put the mask back, that person is going to play a role in this life, in this theater, in the lila. They're going to play their own role. And they may be good, they may be bad. They may be evil, they may be saints or sages. But inside, their essence is the same as yours and as mine. And when you say, I forgive myself, because the mind is very judgmental and we're our worst enemy, and we're the ones who are always judging ourselves more than anybody else. Judgment is one of the plays of the mind. The mind is continuously judging and comparing things. Its job is to compare things with something else so your sister is better than you she's smarter than you your best friend is better looking than you and she's more lucky you're always comparing yourself to other people and that's one of the tricks of the mind you want to look at yourself and be aware of your own way of thinking, behavior, and the way you feel. And that's conscious. But this self continuous self judgment and beating yourself up, that's one of the games that the mind is playing all the time. So you just keep beating yourself up. But when you look within and you recognize that inside you is the divine presence and you are the expression of that presence, then the more you look at it and the more you realize it, the more you also realize that the way you are, as you are right now in this moment, is perfect. It's exactly how 
existence wants to wants you to be to look like to act like your shape your talent your intelligence everything that you have is exactly what it's meant to be but that doesn't mean that we don't look at our own behaviors that doesn't mean that we're not conscious and we don't bring consciousness into the way we are. That doesn't really give us license to be rude and cruel to other people. So there is like a line in between of recognition that you are exactly the way you're meant to be and you accept yourself yet in the meantime you're self-aware and you through your self-awareness you don't become a robot that's where the self-awareness comes and kicks in so you can come outside of yourself and look at yourself and you can look at your mind and you can look at your feelings and by that you can see the ego and you don't fall into the ego but in the meantime you love yourself for being present you love yourself for working on yourself you love yourself for showing up and you accept yourself you accept your imperfections And then transformation starts to happen because you're open, you're not judgmental, but you're aware. There's awareness here and you're simply aware and you're available. You're aware and you're available and you're open and you have gratitude. And then the magic takes over. The magic we all been touched by that magic by the grace so I love myself and I accept myself I love everybody and I forgive everybody because I'm love because I'm light, because I'm God. So I recognize, not in an egotistical way, in a conscious manner of my own true essence, which is the same essence of the rest of the universe. And I surrender to that And in the surrender, the gratitude comes having been great, grateful. And the trust comes. Trusting life. Trusting that everything that you need is always provided. Trusting that you can be patient and things will come to you. You will be guided to the right direction. Look what has happened to us. Now we're here together as one family, the 5D family, fifth dimensional family, trusting that the right teaching comes to us, trusting that when we need something, that thing appears in our lives. And then in that, your heart opens and then you really start to see the sequences that, that you are on the right path and the right teaching is being transmitted to you. And that teaching helps you to open your heart to love. Opening our hearts to love.
to light, opening the window and be available and allowed to come rather than closing it down and being shut down and saying, oh, I got hurt when I was five years old or seven years old or the last relationship I had, I got hurt and I'm never gonna trust anyone or I'm never gonna love anyone. Rather than being the victim and helpless and limitless, we open our hearts to love because I feel it, because love is here. Because love is always flowing from my own heart. It's the presence which is here and I am present with it. I'm not judgmental and I'm not in my mind. I'm here and I can feel it. And through that, it fills up my life. It heals all the scars and all the wounds that have been inflicted on us from childhood. Whatever has happened, the pains of losing, losing close ones, losing family, friends, and things that happen through self-love and being present and being open and having gratitude as, as your behavior, everything gets healed and becomes whole. Be aware of your mind. Don't let it go into this place of blah, 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 and saying, oh, everything sucks and it's really horrible and everybody is a cheater and everybody is blah, 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 blah. Watch out, watch it. Watch yourself when you go into this place of the victim, that you're a victim. Be careful, be aware. Don't allow yourself to go into that place. If you see yourself playing that game, catch yourself and come back to the center. Don't go into the victim place. You're adding fuel to the fire of ego. You can't be a victim. You're much bigger than that. Your divine presence. Your presence is mighty. You cannot be a victim. Nothing can really harm you as when you stay in your position of I am. I am cannot be harmed. But when you are something, I am someone, and you become somebody, and you become limited, and you become needy, yeah, that, that one can be harmed easily. It's got a lot of ups and downs. But when you come back to the center of yourself, and you remember who you are, then you can't be hurt and you become really shiny and beautiful. And you become very attractive. People want to be around you. They find you attractive. Regardless of your shape, you become an attractive person because you're in your own center, you're not a victim, you love yourself, you know who you are, and you know where you come from, you know your essence. And that's very appealing. But then when you come out of it and you become somebody and you become needy and you're a victim and this happened to you and that happened to you and you pick up the violin and starts playing that thing and feeling sorry for yourself because of this or that, then you become somebody and then the ego is there and the ego is ugly. It's really very simple. If you recognize it, 
you may not be able to stay in this place of I am all the time because your condition, your mind is conditioned. So you get identified with the little me. But since you're practicing and you're aware, you just continuously come back into your own center. So slowly, slowly, you begin to unclutch from an old conditioning. It's a lifetime conditioning, and you start to unclutch from it. And then when other people start telling you stories about how much of a victim they are, you don't play into it. You may just listen to them, but you don't play into it. And you also stop and refuse to play and tell stories about how much of a victim you are and how much people have done wrong to you. And if for a moment something has happened to you and you need to just express it and get it out of your chest, you will do that. I'm not saying you're never going to complain about anything but you're fully aware that it's just for a moment. It's just coming out of you and it's over. It doesn't stick. You don't entertain stories anymore. So Ms. Hilda, uh, Evans said you have a question. Yeah, I was wondering if you had some good advice what we can do when people are sucking your energy out of you. Right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a great question. I appreciate you bringing it up. And that is something that always we encounter. Because what happens is that as you're expanding your consciousness, as you're becoming more in tune, okay? And these are, you know, a matter of speaking, of explaining this. Um, it's a matter of explanation. Because however I say it, you, somebody may come and say, well, last time you said something else, and now that kind of contradicts it. But I have to use words and language in order to, to um, convey the understanding and the wisdom and pointing out. And the more expanded you become, the more in tune you become with yourself. A lot of times you develop sensitivity to nonsense. You develop sensitivity to bullshit because you're starting to live the truth of now. You're getting more established within yourself and getting more refined and more focused on the presence. People who are sucking your energy are people who basically are not here and now. They're talking about stories from the past or they're worried about future, but the future they're worried about is coming from their past. They're worried about world's events, politics, econ economics, blah, 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 all the stuff. I'm not saying the stuff is not valid. They're part of the daily life but they're very involved with it. And they're not in here and now, even though they're talking to you in this moment, but their conversation is not about now. And since you're really getting established, Rosalie, just be, be patient, I'll get to you. Since they're, Since you're getting really established in the presence more and more, you, you have very little patience for BS. And you start to see it because you're not really even buying your own stuff anymore. You're starting to recognize when your mind is ranting about nonsense, 
that you're not really buying it. So you're not buying your own mind, let alone to buy somebody else's mind. And when someone is sucking your energy, it's basically they're, re they're requiring your attention. Pay attention to me, pay attention to me, look at me, look at me. Or listen to my spiritual development. Look at me, pay attention to me that how great I've become. But that's still an ego. All of these things about experiences. Somebody one time wanna, wanna share with you about a spiritual experience, that's fine. But if they're continuously asking and wanting your attention to pay attention to them because of their spiritual experiences or worldly experiences, now it's the ego. The ego, the me saying, look at me, look at me, how holy I've become. Energy is taking me away. I'm blah, blah, blah. I've become a healer. I've become a psychic. I can do other body travel. But the true spiritual seekers and who are in tuned, they don't need attention. People who are getting closer to the light, they become more quiet. They don't really need attention from other people by sharing their spiritual experiences they may share it with a close friend once but they're not ranting about it and that's for spiritual people but ordinarily people that basically it's the ego who wants attention and since you're already looking at your own ego and you're not buying your own you have very little patience for other people, so they start sucking your energy. You're getting tired of it. The more you get in tune on this path, the more you enjoy silence, the more you really enjoy being by yourself the more you appreciate your alone time by yourself. And when you do spend time with other people, you choose quality, quality people. And that's why, you know, when we get together, I mean, I've been one-on-one -on -one with most of you, or we've been in a group setting together, and most of you from the academy who've been with me, I know how you feel. You, you all tell me the same thing, and I tell you the same thing. Zarathustra, I really enjoy spending time by myself. And I understand it. Because you're, you're spending time by yourself, and you start to feel the presence. And the presence is very yummy and very juicy and very loving because you... You're in silence by yourself. You're in the nature walking by yourself or hanging out and you start to feel the bliss of the, of the presence. And if you're with somebody who's blah, blah, blahing, they're disturbing your flow of bliss. So you don't want to be around them. And since you're getting more in tune and more sensitive, a lot of times, a lot of places you go to and the sound and the music is disturbing because majority of the music and the sound in the world, in the clubs, in the bars, in the restaurants, on the radio, there are the kind of sound vibration which is designed for distraction. It's designed to tune into the level of the mind which is unit is for masses and music and the sound is a form of brainwashing and brain control so if you want to control the masses there's a lot of different ways that you can use different things whether it's media it's tv it's garbage movies that they're making 
garbage programs they're making it's to just pollute it's pollution and the same thing is a lot of music and a lot of noise that is pollution it's not music it's not like you went to a concert and the concert is high quality sound which resonates with your soul it's pollution and since you're tuning in you recognize pollution in sound, in music. So naturally, you don't want to be around it, rightfully. My sad guru, Papaji, always said that look for the company of the wise and find the company of the wise in other words that you are looking for those who are vibrating in your own frequency or a higher frequency and naturally we're attracted to those who are vibrating in a much higher frequency and they're a beacon of love and light and we get very attracted to them and slowly slowly a lot of your friends as you are on the path and you're going towards the light you're going towards the light in in other words you're walking these mountain of consciousness you're going around this mountain of consciousness you're climbing up at the base of the mountain let's say you go to mount everest and you go to there's camps at the very base of mount everest camps lots of camps different type of camps different kind of people some are there and teaching yoga. There are some over there are making food. Some they're selling hiking, climbing boots, clothing. Some have created some um, hotels or posadas or whatever. Different services provided for those who want to walk up the mountain. They're not going to walk up the mountain. They're just providing services. And then there's different groups and camps that people decide that they're going to be walking up to climb and get to the top of Himalaya, to get to the top of Everest, for example. And as you're climbing and you start climbing the mountain, and let's say you get to the first mesa, you get to the first, you've already gone up, like you have hiked a thousand meter, something like that. And you start with a group of 20 people and you get to the first level and then five of them say, okay, you know, I, I think I've done enough or my leg hurts or I'm just going to settle down here and this is good enough for me for now. And then you're going to the second level and another five people drop off and they say, you know what, I may just stay here and open up a coffee shop and I provide some kind of coffee tea to the travelers, the ones who are going up. Then you're starting to climb higher. You get to the third level and another five people drop off. And they have their own reasons or excuses or whatever. And as you're climbing and you're getting to the peaks, another person drops off. You go a little bit higher, another person drops off. Anyway, by the time you get to the very peak of consciousness, you will find yourself alone most of the time. Maybe there is another person there, maybe. Most of the time, when you get to the peaks of consciousness, 
you find yourself alone. You're by yourself. Because the other ones, they don't want to pay the price. They don't want to hike all the way. It's hard. It's cold. It's hardship. You have to go through climbing through freezing cold or minus 10 degrees or 20 degrees. And you have to carry your stuff because you're going to the very peak of Mount Everest. So not, so what I'm pointing out to as you're more going deeper in your spirituality and you're getting closer to the light, don't expect to have a lot of people around you. There's going to be less people around you. Because A, you, you, a lot of the people you know, you don't feel like hanging out with them because they're ranting and yakking about the world all the time. About money, about investments, about da-da-da-da-da. They're worried about this, worried about that. Now you're starting to live in light and you're starting to live in trust and you're living in a moment. So you're trusting life. You're not really worried about what's going to happen to you five, five years from now. The most you're concerned about is maybe a month from now. But you're living in now. Of course you're thinking about your investments, not running out of money at old age, and not have to be on the street or begging other people to help you. I understand that. That's common sense. But your mind is not dwelling and residing into the future. You're working on yourself and you're living in now. And when you're around people who are really worried about future or they're constantly talking about the past, if I did this, if I did that, if I blah, 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 you're bored with it. You have no patience for it. You may be nice and listen to them or pretend that you're listening to them for a half an hour, one hour. You know, you go to Christmas uh, evening with your family or your whatever, old family, old friends, whatever, for a short period of time, you act like you're listening. Or you may even be listening, but you have no interest. You've changed. You're someone else now. You have no patience for that. That was then. So now you don't have many friends unless we find each other in, in spiritual arenas. And on the spiritual arenas, there's so many different levels too. There's a lot of different school of spirituality, different things. So if you're lucky and you keep looking, keep looking, keep looking, Maybe you find the right family, like what has happened here with us. We found each other through the grace. Through the grace, we found our spiritual group who speaks the same language and we resonate with this wisdom and these teachings. We resonate with it. There's a lot of different teachings. But we're resonating with this one. This is the one for us at this moment. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, but at this moment, this is right. And then we find our friends. This is very rare. Most people don't have this in their lives. They feel very isolated, even though they're on spiritual path. Because where do you find them? Where do you find spiritual people? You don't find your own kind of people in a bar or in a restaurant, you have to go to spiritual centers, yoga places, uh, spiritual bookstores, or health food stores, places like that, and workshops here and there, and hopefully eventually you find your family. So it's very normal and natural that when you're on this path that you experienced that you're alone. 
you're on your own. That's normal. But sometimes you feel that you're lonely. That's a different story. So you want to be aware you don't mix up loneliness with aloneness. I spend a lot of time alone by myself. Willingly and unwillingly, my career, my work, my passion requires me on traveling. And a lot of times you're alone by yourself. But that's different than being lonely. So back to answering Hilda's question, I mean, I, I was answering that. Um, don't hesitate and don't feel guilty to avoid people who suck your energy. Just like anything, it's like bad company. And naturally, you're not attracted to it. And naturally, you want to walk away from it. There is a saying, um, it says, if it's good to you, it's good for you. With anything, you know? So let's say you're eating some kind of food or fruit or whatever, and if it's really good to you, it makes you feel good, then it's good for you. All right, Ms. Rosalie. Yeah, you were talking is, about steal, stealing energy. Uh -huh. And when I grew up, my mother all the time said to me that don't cut the hand of the person you don't know. But when I meet a person and the energy go like a car crash, I just do like this. Okay. Like distance. Right. But that's, that's people that suck energy from you. They don't need to say a word. I just do like this. I push okay. my Right. Okay, so you find your way to block it. Yeah, that's that's the way I find when I grow up. But today I should find a way to block when I take what people think. But that's when you're coming in the shopping center, it's just like to come in the chicken farm. <laughs> Around the whole place. So mm -hmm. I like to use a hat. <laughs> So can you please teach me that? How to block that? <laughs> <laughs> That's for another day when I have time to talk about it. Yeah. It's already like eight o'clock. How far are we gonna go today, Miss Shishi? Let me unmute you. Hi. Hi. How far? Well, we said an hour. Do you wanna go longer? Yeah, I can go 15. How about if we go to for another 15 minutes? Is everybody in it? Yes, no, or yeah, is that cool? All right. Okay, talk about the chickens in the shopping mall? Say that again. We're going to talk about the chickens in the shopping mall with Rosalie. <laughs> we have time now. <laughs> <laughs> So that, that's the same thing, you know, you just go back, you go to it wherever you go and the noise, you, you, the noise is there. I mean, first of all, you have to realize one thing, that this noise that you're referring to is the collective noise. So in a way, it's good for you because it represents your own mind. When something's annoying you, you can always use that 
and turn the poison into medicine. There's always a way that you can turn something from it being a disadvantaged situation into your advantage. So the noise that you're hearing and is really bugging you by going into shopping mall or going to a restaurant, somewhere you go and it's really disturbing. And there is this sound, whether it's the thoughts of other people that you're experiencing or this TV or whatever. But that's the noise of the collective. That's the sound of the collective that is disturbed. And that represents a disturbed mind. That represents the disturbed society because it's ruled by the mind, it's ruled by the ego. So when you go to that, you're in that situation that you go to the mall, Rosalie, and you hear that noise, know that that represents the mind. And now it's your own mind. I'm not saying your, own, your mind is that, your own mind may be quiet, but basically it's the collective mind. So now it's your own mind being exaggerated by a hundred times. So it's disturbing. So use that to notice the noise of your own mind that's representing the noise of your own mind in an exaggerated way. And be aware of the noise of your own mind. Yeah? Go yeah, ahead. But, but when, uh, when people think, it's the same as I nearly feel that they talk to me. Sometimes I answer people in the side of me when they're standing think there. But that's not nice. <laughs> I mean, it's not nice to, to answer people when they stay in the yes. and take it yourself. Yeah, I understand. I understand. Yeah. So that's why. Sorry, I didn't hear the rest of what you said. That's why what? Uh, that's why I don't like to, to go into shopping center and sit nearby people. Yeah, I understand that. As I mentioned to you, the more the more expanded you, you become, the more sensitive you become to the noise. So, sorry, Anneli. Um, yes. Okay. Are you at your place? At your In house? My room? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's a nice stairway behind you. You have a nice place. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, it's beautiful. I have to come and visit your visit you at your yes. house. I've never seen yes. your house. We must come here and, and invite the, the, uh, maybe some of uh, the people in, living in Stockholm. We can have a, a grill party here. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, that sounds. You have a nice place. Yeah. So, yeah. It's so room, it's room. It's room for everyone with to have a big heart. Yeah, well, we'll invite, yeah, we'll have yep. a, we'll have a day party there. Maybe we invite the yes. family and all of our friends from the academy. Yes, we will you do that. Join but back in. to you, tomorrow, you, uh, first day you're going to have satsang from 7 to 9 or? No, it's from 6.30 to 8.30 is the 5D Quantum Awareness Talk Series. And, um, yeah, it's the sat It's sat really sat nice. Yeah. And you're all invited. It's open to everyone. Free event. And that's yes, going to be, yes. at, yeah, it's free event. If you like to make a donation, we'll welcome it. So I think we'll just put a donation basket there if you want to help with the cost or we we'll pay for the place so I can continue doing it. You're more than welcome yes. to make, make a donation if your heart says yes. Um, then yes, it's really important. Way. It's really important that we, uh, uh, because you must continue to come to Sweden. They were going to see you. 
So it's important that we can help you with the donation uh, because if you have a lot of uh, free events, so I really um, how people want to help with the nation. I really, really. And you're going to have in 18, you're going to have a whole day? Saturday 18th is going to be the initiation to the fifth dimension. So <clears throat> that's going to be an all day event. It's, it's, a, it's a workshop. Uh, it's a mini workshop. We start at 10 in the morning and uh, it's divided in four or five sections basically. Right? I don't want to tell you all the details because then I, I'll spoil it. So <laughs> it's going to be a surprise. You have, you have a lot of uh, new things and uh, magic things in uh, this uh, in 18. I know that. It's, and you're going to be not in the Bayonne Academy. I think you're going to be uh, heard by Scott um, 48, Södermalm. Yeah, I'm gonna, what we're going to do is we're going to announce the, um, first of all, everyone's going to get an email from us. Yes. And also we're going to send text, text SMS messages regarding the both events. So yes. uh, with the address, time, all, and uh, as well as we're announcing it on Facebook on my website so if you're confused you have questions you can contact me shishi or contact anali or pia yes so um and get the information you're looking for but 18th is going to be the in initiation i'm going to be there's going to be teachings it's a workshop that we're having about the 5d quantum awareness an initiation to the fifth dimensional consciousness. I'm inviting you all as my guest. And then, so we have the meditation, we have the teachings, we will have the activation, and then in the afternoon, we'll have the initiation. We're also going to share food. So it's a potluck if you uh, feel like bringing something of your magic, whatever it is. Uh, whether it's food or cookies or desserts or whatever, or drinks or anything you like to bring, we appreciate it. If the weather is nice, we try to go to the park nearby and, and eat out. If not, we'll stay inside. And then we'll celebrate and we're going to dance and have fun. Like always, when we're doing it in my workshops, there's dancing, laughing, and there's the teachings. So... I'm very excited, Maybe. but this is the first time that I decided that I'm going to do initiations to fifth dimension. Uh, I'm going to go. Uh, you hear me, sir? Yeah, I can hear you, yeah, sir. Yes, I, I get out to my car because uh, now. But I also want to remember people who want to come to order. There's a few places left there now. And I really want, if you feel that you want to go to Aura, it's really important that you contact me, Pia, Sarahusta, and Shishi, because um, it's, um, I feel that it's really uh, good that we can um, make a plan and we're going to go into the energy before um, we get up there. So I really uh, want... If you feel that you want to go there, if you hesitate that you don't know if you want or not, please call us. We can speak about it and I want to um, uh, help you to, if you wonder of something, and you can write to you, Sarosta, uh, and, and like that. So uh, it's really important uh, because now we're in the middle of May. We're going to go up there in the uh, first July. And we need to uh, know which which, uh, yeah. which one of you want to come. Yeah, I, I appreciate you brought it up. Yeah, I mentioned yes. actually, Miss Shishi and I we did the accounting and and uh, we only have four double bedrooms available. So and if we have an overflow, yes. 
if I don't have enough time, then I can't get another house. So if there's going to be people who do want to come and you're sitting on a fence, you better uh, uh, jump in yeah. as soon as possible because if you're late, then I won't be able to get this other house. So I'm, then I'm going to have to close the registration because I won't have any more space. But I thank you for bringing it up, um, uh, Annelie. Yeah. Great. All right. Yes, yeah, so we are here to answer the question if you want something about order. Uh, you okay. know, uh, thank four, you, thank four, you. four people signed up, joined four beautiful people. And I, this year is going to be a very beautiful, as always, uh, yes. a group of people who are joining ORE. And um, I basically know, except a couple of names that I don't recognize, everyone else, I, they've been with me in past couple of months. So this is going to be a very juicy year. John Dumas is coming, this very beautiful shaman brother of mine, who is one of the most amazing sound vibrational therapist healers that I've ever met. And uh, his knack is to really hold the space. And um, I'm not going to say so much about him. You're welcome to go online and check out some of his videos because I would like to keep some parts of this event uh, as a surprise. But uh, this is going to be a good one. All right. Well, it's nice to see you all. Thank you for joining me. Um, I'm looking at my schedule next Tuesday. Next Wednesday, I'm going to Warsaw. And next Tuesday, uh, actually, the entire next week, I have events. And the following week, I go to Frankfurt. Um, and I keep having events. I'm going to try to see uh, when I can hold another academy. And that's probably going to be in two weeks if I can pull it off. And I have to see if I have an evening available uh, and I'm not busy with either events or appointments. So uh, tune in, keep in touch with me and just check out our schedule in my website or just contact us and uh, we'll keep connecting. Those of you who are going to be in Sweden or close by in uh, Stockholm area, uh, come and visit me uh, at my next two events. This coming Thursday and Saturday, and I look forward to seeing you all. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next Academy. Sending you lots of love. Stay in your heart. Come back here. Don't go out there too far away in the world of the mind. It just drags you all kinds of places. Just come back here. Every time you feel like you're lost and you're stuck somewhere and you start, the moment you start to feel that you're suffering, know that you're outside of here and just come back. Come back home because when you're here, here, there is no suffering. Only when you get out of here and you go somewhere in the past or you go in the future, then suffering creeps in. But here is always safe and there's not much going on. Sending you lots of love and light. Love you all. Thank you for joining me.